Right, good morning, my name's Chris, and today we're going to be looking at herbs and um, veg. It's quite open, so if you want to ask any questions at any time, just put your hand up or shout out, and welcome to all hecklers. We live in a very changing world, but one thing that hasn't changed for thousands of years, and that's the use of herbs. Prior to the Greeks, Romans, herbs have been used for food, even uh, small wildlife plants, salabinet you find growing in the fields, were used for uh, feed, plants like feverfew, that was used for treating migraine, things like that. The salix, from which we get the original aspirin, the salicycline, that comes from this, and they used to chew the bark to cure headaches. We've also got magic mystery, things like that, with Chelsea this week, they're very much uh, focusing on the fox gloves, the digitalis. And these are all part of the herbal folklore that's gone on for hundreds and hundreds of years. There's a chemical in there, digitoxin, that's used as a heart drug. It has been used as a poison and all these other things. Plus the stories of little fairies in the woodland groves, things like that. But we must remember a lot of these um, plants, where they come from, are very endangered. This plant here, although this is the sort of uh, uh, nursery version, the wildlife version is comes from just one part of Libya and has actually become virtually extinct. And this plant was used for many thousands of years for curing various diseases. So it's very important with all these plants that we uh, keep, keep them together and we know what they were used for and how they were used. A lot of the uh, plants, they came for, uh, originated in like the Roman times. And uh, so a lot of the um, herbs we see today, the oregano, marjoram, things like that, were introduced by the Romans. When the Romans left, it became a sort of a darker period in the world of herbs. And it's only in the Middle Ages when we had the monasteries that they set up the um, herb gardens and also the physic gardens, and the physic garden where they used to grow all the different herbs for uh, medicinal uses. And those plants, with well, the chemicals from these have been used since until the 18th century when they uh, started using them or making chemical versions of the drugs. So it's, um, the history goes back a long, long way. You've also heard that they used for things like dyes, things like that. Also, some of the herbs were used very much as uh, in the Middle Ages when the food was a little bit on the uh, not so we, so we say the healthy side. They used herbs to disguise the smell of rotting meat and things like that. Uh, they were also used pot puries. In the Middle Ages, things weren't quite as tidy as they were today. They didn't have plug-in uh, scents, so they used to use various herbs from the garden to actually uh, scent the houses. Also, they were used to deter pests, things like that. There's a plant here uh, we sell, Artemisia. Its other name is Wormwood, and they used to use that in the house to deter woodworm. So, imagine all these plants. They come in all shapes and sizes, but in one way or another, they had some form of importance. I'm now going to give a few ideas what you can do with the um, sort of different herbs. Herbs, as we found out, have come from like Mediterranean, a lot of those like bright, hot, sunny conditions. You've also got the other herbs that are more keen on growing in the shade, the mints, the uh, parsley, plants like that. So if you're creating a pot, have a little think where it's going. And the first one we'll do is a sun-loving uh, planter. I've just used normal multi-purpose compost. If you're going to be using plants that are going to be from one year to the next, I'll say mix in a John Innes number three with the multi-purpose, or use a John Innes and then say 20%, just use a multi-purpose and that just opens it up. The uh, first plant we'll put in is the uh, lavender. 
Lavender comes from the Latin word meaning lavendula, meaning to clean, to wash, hence the word lavateria. And in the Middle Ages and 2,000 years ago in the Middle East, they actually used to put their clothing over lavender bushes when drying to give them a nice scent. So you imagine that, we, we didn't have those washing machines with all our scents and everything else, and this is how they used to dry them. To complement, and a plant that goes quite well with Italian cooking, is like marjoram and oregano, which is a nice yellow colour, and that goes, contrasts quite nicely with uh, lavender. This will cascade over the side, so we'll put that in there. Another plant that's very good for the seeds and also it's got a lovely um, colour foliage. The flowers are very good for attracting things like lacewing. And lacewing will gobble through about 200 aphid a day. So it makes a nice plant to attack and to control all your aphids in the garden. We might put this at the back because it's got nice sort of purple foliage. Another plant that will trail over the edge, and that is this plant here, the golden thyme. We'll have that at the, um, around the side here. And another plant for all the um, stuffing, things like that, and that's the purple sage. We can also go, sage comes in about three different colours, you've got plain green, you've got this type with the variegated leaves, or you've got the one there with the purple. And we most probably have that at the back here. So you see, it's a plant for um, cooking, especially if you like Italian cooking. But it's quite colourful with all the different colours, so you'll also get the flowers. Keep them well watered and a good feed to use every 7 to 10 days is liquid tomato feed so you get good strong growth. Another idea we could use is uh, if you've got a barbecue area, we can create perhaps a pot for your drinks cabinet. We could start off in the middle with say a citrus plant. If you like um, things like pims, you've got borage that you could then grow in there. You've got this plant here, lemon balm. Lemon balm, you smell that, it gives off a nice sort of citrusy smell. You have a pot of this by your barbecue and it actually deters uh, midges and uh, other insects. But it's also quite good for going in teas, things like that. Another plant is the um, pineapple sage. You smell the um, foliage and that. <laughs> and you can uh, make a tea out of that. And it also has nice red flowers in the autumn time. Do you need it back? You've also got another plant, lemon verbena. You can also got things like thyme as well you can use. So imagine this by your barbecue. If you're rushing out for your uh, drinks uh, and you need a little bit of a scent to go in, with, uh, if you just pick the leaves of these and you can add them to your various drinks. The um, flowers of uh, borage as well look really good if you freeze them in ice cubes. You can also create a theme as well, if you're keen on like Indian cooking, think what herb to use for Indian food. So you could create a pot with all the um, various herbs in that you use for Indian cooking. And they would include things like um, the chilli peppers, you've got garlic,
You've got plants like coriander, uh, fennel, and perhaps uh, technically not really used in uh, traditional curries, and that is the uh, curry plant. But it actually looks quite good mixed with the other plants. So if you were creating like an Indian meal, you've got all the herbs and uh, sort of in one place. Another plant that you could actually um, use on this is if you go to the supermarket, you can buy the roots of um, the ginger plant and you can put those in there and actually grow the uh, ginger plant in a nice sort of warm sunny position. Obviously as the season progresses, the chilli peppers will then come out and you've got quite a nice bit of, uh, sort of colour to add to the container. So something like that on your patio actually looks quite um, colourful with all the different colour of foliage, you've got the fruits. At the other end we've got plants that like the shade. I suppose one of the most popular ones of those are like the mints. A mints come in, well you get the smell now as I uh, pick the plants up, but they come in so many different scents, colours, tastes, you've got chocolate, you've got spearmint, you know the chocolate mint, you walk around and you think, oh that, that smells fantastic, and it's sort of chocolate that you can nibble away at and not worry about putting on the pounds. They also come in like the variegated colours as well. To give you height, you could use um, coriander or plants like chervil. You've got um, parsley, you've got like fat leaf parsley or the normal curly parsley you could use. Another plant that looks quite attractive and it makes a nice ground cover plant is this plant here, Woodruff. I'm not too sure how it's used in cooking, but it's quite an attractive little plant with the flowers. It's um, a few add to the, um, well you could actually add it to your drink pot because it's used for tea and wine. And you could also use um, the uh, fennel as well. And that would be a good plant so if you've got a really deep shady uh, spot in the garden and all these plants will uh, grow away quite happily. Another idea for um, herbs is a hanging basket. You could, if you wanted to, fill it up with strawberries, things like that. I tend to go for one of these um, scented geraniums. Some of them smell of apples, there's one that smells of Coca-Cola supposedly, and all sorts of citrus smells. You can actually, uh, I'm not too sure how, you can actually use the leaves of these under um, cakes when you bake them and it gives a sort of scent. To go with a little bit of contrast, there again we go for like the marjoram, which has got the nice golden foliage. The more you cut this back, the more new growth comes out, which gives you the nice sort of golden colour. Another favourite with the smell would be like the golden thyme. And you've got this one is the marjoram as well, so we'd have that at the back. We can actually, to add a little bit of interest, and remember violas, you can actually use the flowers of these in uh, sort of salads, things like that. So we can have that at the front. And perhaps at the back, we could have a golden oregano just to go in there. Obviously, I've done this for demonstration purposes. If you've planted this up, you put some compost in and then work your way around and then fill up the gaps in between with the compost. But something like that, you hang that up, is quite attractive and that will go right the way through the seasons. So you can do a little bit of mix with herbs, bedding plants to give real interest and this will go on, well, a 
apart from the drain which needs protection in the winter time, you could actually leave that in the pot, lift it out and then put something else in there for the autumn time to give you colour over the winter time. But all these others are quite perennial. Any questions so far on, on the use of herbs? The question is um, if Mediterranean plants need a lot of water. Mediterranean are very sort of free draining, so they can put up more dry conditions. If, if it gets too wet and waterlogged, the roots of some of the plants can sort of die out. So what you want to do in your pot is you can actually uh, recreate a Mediterranean feel. And it's very gritty, so you can actually add horticultural grit to the compost. Around the top of the pots that look, does look quite nice is if you get some sort of golden shale or golden rocks, so you're creating like that Tuscany feel in a, in a pot. Some of the plants, like herbs, can be a bit of a thug, and one of them is horseradish. As I drive up and down the road, I notice quite a few of these plants growing on roundabouts. And to get nice straight roots, I tend to grow it in an old six inch downpipe. And by doing that you get then get nice straight stems. In the autumn you haven't got all the roots marching away across the herb patch in the garden and on the allotment. So in the autumn you pick them up, you can then store the roots, you can cut off a small bit of root that you keep in damp sand and then pop on for the following year. Instead of using lavender, you can also um, use the um, bay to give you, give you height. This was one of the plants they used to actually put in the house to deter um, insects and other, other pests. Right, moving on, we're going to now go and start looking at uh, some of the um, vegetables. And I suppose the most popular one is the tomato plant.